this recording we're going to talk about PHP data objects otherwise known as PDO. So PHP data objects are a way of storing and retrieving data from a database in an object oriented way. If up to this point you've been learning procedural uh, PHP then you've possibly been connecting to the database using the MySQL I functions. PDO is much better, it's more object oriented and it also takes care of some of the uh, security concerns for us by using bindings to our queries. Some information before I start, I record in high resolution so no need to watch on the blurry screen. Choose high definition if that works for you. Would you like to join a growing group of PHP developers and take your skills to a new level? If that sounds like you, all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon and welcome. There is one prerequisite to this lesson and that is that you should have MySQL installed on your computer before we start. So check out the attached documentation or the documentation which preceded this lesson and that should get you to where you need to be. In order to administer my database, I'm using a tool called Table Plus. If you're using PHP Add My Admin or something like that, then it's totally fine. Here is my connection details. So it's localhost port 3306, which is like standard for MySQL, and the user is root, and I'm not using a password. I'm going to create a new database. So I hit this little plus here, and I'm just going to call it PDO-demo. Then I'm going to set my encoding, which will be my character sets, and it's UTF-8MB4. Click OK on that, and then I'll select my database, and I now have a database up and running. I'm going to create a table, so I have some SQL, which I'm just going to paste in here. It's fairly straightforward. This isn't really a MySQL lesson, it's a PHP lesson, but this is quite basic SQL. If you don't really know any SQL, the stuff I'm going to use in these lessons is going to be really quite basic, so you can just copy what I do, but it will be worth you going and learning some SQL also in addition to this. So this is going to create my users table, and it's just going to have an ID, a name field, an email field, and create that, which will be a timestamp. So very basic user details. One thing you'll notice about my timestamp is that I'm setting it as a default to the current timestamp. So whenever a record is inserted, it will be given the date and time as it currently stands. Okay, that's created my table. Let's have a quick look at that. And as you can see, four fields, ID, name, email, created app. And just so that I have some data to play with to start with, I'm going to insert myself. So Gary Clark, Gary at example.com and then current timestamp for the created at field. Okay, so my database now has my one record. I'm now gonna go over and create a file called connection.php. This is gonna contain all the PHP code which is required in order to connect to that database that I just created. The way I do it is this, PDO, I can call it anything, equals new PDO, and PDO is found in the global PHP namespace. As you can see, it takes four arguments, DSN, username, password, and options. First, let's write our DSN. DSN stands for data source name, and we write it like this. It's MySQL, and then colon, followed by host, we could include port, but we're not going to bother in this case because we don't need to. So it'll be host, database name, and then character set. I'm just putting in these little placeholders and then we'll fill them in one by one. It's important that you spell everything exactly the same way as I've done here, otherwise this won't work. So let's go and have a look at our connection. And as you can see, our host 127.0.0.1, which is the same as localhost. So we'll store this in a variable also, and then we'll just drop it into our string here. And then a database name, if you recall, we call this PDO demo. We'll also store this in a variable. So PDO hyphen demo. And then the character set, if you recall what we used when we set up our database. It was UTF-8MB4, 
or lowercase. Then I just drop that into my DSN string and with that, that's DSN taken care of. We can pass that in as the first argument into our PDO constructor. Second argument, if you remember, was username. So that was root for our connection. Password, we can leave this blank. We said we're not going to use a password. So just an empty string. And then the final option is called options. And we use this to tell PDO how we'd like it to behave. So for example, how do we want PDO to handle errors? How do we want it to fetch records from the database, i.e. in what format? Loads and loads of options. We're just going to set a couple which will be useful to ourselves. It's typically all done using PDO class constants. This first one that I'm setting here, PDO ATTR error mode, that means attribute error mode. So we're saying how do we want this to handle errors? And what we've said with PDO air mode exception is that we want it to throw exceptions. The next one, PDO ATTR default fetch mode. How do we want it to fetch the records? And we're gonna say we want it to fetch our records as associative arrays. So PDO fetch ASOC. When I actually click on these constants to go and see what the values are, you'll see that they're typically just numbers. So meaningless to us, but PDO knows exactly what these numbers mean and it will behave according to what numbers are set. If you want to know what they mean, usually you can find an explanation of what they mean in the comments. And as you can see here, fetch ASOC equals two, but the comment says, it's going to fetch an associative array. Our final step is to wrap this connection attempt in a try block. If any errors are encountered uh, during the attempt of this connection, then we can expect a PDO exception to be thrown. So what we're going to do is we're going to catch that and we're going to throw a PDO exception of our own, but which only contains the message from the original exception and also the code. This is just a security thing which I read about and it makes it a bit more secure. We're giving away less information about our system and about the error. And now that is our setup complete. All we need to do is test this. If it works, we shouldn't see anything. If it fails, then we should see an exception. So everything's gone through there. We're all up and running. In the next one, we're gonna start fetching data from the database and inserting data into the database. So that's our introduction to PDO. This recording is actually a preview from my complete object-oriented PHP developer course. If you want to know more about that, then check out the link which is in the description below. In the next one, we're going to take it for a test drive. We'll start running some queries. We'll put some data in a database and we'll start querying data out of the database using PDO. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope it's been useful. Give it a thumbs up if so. And don't hesitate to share if you want to help other developers like yourself. That's what good developers do. One other thing, if you want YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon. I release new recordings every week and details of my upcoming schedule can be found on the community tab of my YouTube channel homepage.